three. Hello, everyone. <laughs> hello, hello. Good evening, wherever you're coming in from. If you're coming in from the US, good evening. If you're coming in from overseas, good afternoon, good morning, depending on where you're coming in from. We are so, so very excited to be before you tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tracy Humphreys, and welcome to Hump Day with the Humphreys. <laughs> so we have such a treat for you all tonight. We are very excited to be before you. Um, many of you may have watched our previous Facebook Live where the wives got together. We were talking about interceding for your husband and your children. And so we got many requests for a part two. So here we are, everyone. We're so honored to be before you tonight. And we just thank God in advance for everything that he's going to do through this Facebook Live. We give him all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise because he is making all of this possible. And so, Holy Ghost, have your way tonight. Yes. And so, ladies and gentlemen, um, you know, before you, you have some beautiful, when I tell you beautiful <laughs> women, not only are they beautiful on the outside, but they are just as beautiful, maybe even more beautiful on the inside and so many of you the last time actually saw uh the live you heard a little bit about them but for those of you that may not know who they are i just wanted to take a quick moment to introduce each and every one of them and so first and foremost i would love to introduce nicole taylor I can tell you this, ladies and gentlemen, I love this woman of God. We actually, what's powerful about this is that we met through intercession. We met because I listened to this woman and her husband pray like I've never heard anybody pray before. And so from there, we got connected. And what I love about her is she didn't say, yes, Tracy, and jump on whatever it was that I was asking her to do, which is to share on the platform. What she said is, Tracy, I have to get to know you first. I have to discern you first. And I truly respect that about her. And so when we, what we did was it took us about a good year before we really started doing work together. And so we got to know each other personally. We got to know each other spiritually. She has also been a spiritual guidance. She's guided me spiritually. And so I truly admire and respect her as a woman of God. And let me tell y'all something. Nicole is way younger than me. In all intents and purposes, she might even be the age that I could have her as my daughter. But I respect her and yes. I respect the calling on her life. Yeah. I have no ego, you know? And so I love the fact that we could come together as women. It doesn't matter age because, mm -hmm. you know, in, 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 in God's kingdom, it's not about your age, right? Mm -hmm. And so I just love and respect where she is spiritually. She's a powerful mom, a mom mm -hmm. of four. She mm -hmm. married to Mikhail Taylor, a mm -hmm. powerful man of God. And so mm -hmm. she's also an author. She's a life coach. She, ladies and gentlemen, powerful woman of God. The yeah. next person I would love to introduce is another dear friend, Sherilyn Ross. Sherilyn <laughs> Ross, ladies and gentlemen, I got to tell you all a little bit about this woman. <laughs> um, I mean, she is married <clears throat> to her husband, uh, Joel Ross, who's a minister. They've been married for 23 years. Sherilyn also started her life in finance. She worked on Wall Street. But I know for a fact she became an entrepreneur. Great mm -hmm. job, Sherilyn. Yeah. Little did you know you were being propelled into your ministry from yeah. that entrepreneurship, right? And so Sherilyn and her husband, they lead and train business leaders across the U.S. 
And, uh, you know, and, and they did that for over 15 years. She's a mother to three beautiful children, and I've met them all. I can attest to that. Uh, she has uh, her son, who is now 21 years old. He graduated college in three and a half years, and he works in management for the city of Boston. Her 19-year-old daughter, who's a very talented singer, yeah. tells and high performing student. She's majoring in communications and she has a 16 year old son who is a major athlete. Mm. You know, he is looked at by some of the top universities in Amen. the United States yes. of America. When, mm -hmm. when I tell you her children are like so powerful. And so tonight, Cheryl Lynn is gonna be touching on children, intercession mm -hmm. when it comes to your children. Nicole will actually be touching on intercession in general, right? She'll be mm -hmm. speaking to the intercessor in you tonight. Amen. Right? She'll also be sharing her testimony. And then, of course, of course, let's introduce <laughs> the beautiful, the amazing, the wonderful mm -hmm. uh, Mrs. Ewing, uh, Mrs. Ewing is a woman that I had the honor and the privilege of meeting at an event when I went to see Minister Kevin in 2019, the early part mm -hmm. of 2019. And from there, we forged a connection. And I, I truly, as you all know, many of you admire her husband, Minister Kevin, pastor Ewing. Mm -hmm. And so you know him. He is a powerful spiritual leader, global leader. He is setting people free, setting the captives free mm -hmm. around the world. But Mrs. Ewing, y'all, guess what? She is his intercessor. She watches over him. She travels with him. She works alongside him to build this powerful global ministry that they have. They are known throughout all the corners of the world. And so Mrs. Ewing is newly, newly retired. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and parents, they, you know, uh, 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 Mrs. Ewing, she's an amazing mom, amazing wife. She is a counselor. She counsels a lot. Counsels a lot of single people, married people. They're great counselors. Let me tell y'all. Y'all are before some powerful women of God. And thank so, you. ladies and gentlemen, uh, I just want to say thank you again for coming on. We are now going to go into some information that I know you guys really need to listen to. Um, it is. It's something that I want y'all to understand about marriage mechanics itself. So marriage mechanics, we do marriage, yes, but that's only a small portion of what we do. Yes. It doesn't matter if you are married, if you are single, if you are divorced, if you're in a situationship, mm -hmm. if you're in a, uh, if you're widowed, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter where you are in your life. This group is for you. We share information that is geared around family, around relationships, around marriage. And so I wanted to make that very clear. If you're on here and you're thinking, oh, they're talking about marriage, we connect with everyone. Yeah. All right. So yeah. we want you to understand that here you can come, you can learn, you can glean from the information that is being shared among all of us, that's what marriage mechanics is all about. We are all about restoring, rejuvenating marriages and relationships in general. So we wanted to make that very clear. So you're not thinking, oh, this says marriage is not for me. And I also want y'all to think about it like this. Think about it like this. If you are broke, right? If you are broke and don't have no money, do you want to be in a group where other broke people are sharing information? <laughs> or do you want to be in a group? Yes. 
you're talking to wealthy people mm. because ultimately that's where you're trying to go. Yeah. You want to be wealthy. So I use that concept to explain if you desire marriage, whether you're in a happy marriage, seeking marriage, praying for marriage, hoping for marriage, you want to be among those that will help you, that will um, share with you, that will encourage you in this area. And so that is what this group is about. So I wanted to get that out of the way up front. Mm -hmm. And I also, you know, some more house rules things or not really rules, but sharing. Please stay on towards the end because we have a powerful surprise for each and every one of you. We have a huge announcement that we're going to be making at the end of this broadcast. So you want to definitely stay on to the end. And so with that being said, I just wanted to go into um, I just wanted to go into a few things, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you know, intercession is something that is very passionate uh, and, and it's near and dear to my heart personally, because the woman <laughs> see sitting before you, intercession is why I'm still here today. It's by the grace and the mercy of God. It's because of prayer. It's because the Lord delivered me through prayer. Uh, the first time I received deliverance, I was in a room on a cold floor by myself before the Lord. It was because I was praying and asking him to remove the ignorance because, you know, quite frankly, I wasn't someone who was raised in a household where we prayed a lot or we read the Bible. I didn't come from that background. I came from an environment where I, I struggled a little bit spiritually early in my life, but when the Lord, <laughs> when the Lord beckoned me, I want to say, um, I found myself in one of the darkest places in my life. Um, I was going through a lot of challenges in my marriage. I found myself alone. And one night I was just in a place of sick and tired of being sick and tired. Do y'all know mm -hmm. that feeling? Do you have anybody on here, please put it in the chat. Have you ever gotten to a place where you're like, Lord, are you hearing me? Are you seeing me? I need help. Help me. You're mm -hmm. crying out. Is anybody on here felt, uh, you know, that at any point in your life? If you have, you know what I'm talking about. And, and what happened during that time? the Lord led me to just pour out my heart to him and be honest. See, intercession, being intercessors and everything, it begins with you. Mm -hmm. It begins with your personal intimacy with the Lord. Because sure, when somebody is going through something and they're in need of prayer, we all can just do wildfire, right? Mm -hmm. We can all jump in and start praying and just, mm -hmm. you don't know what your prayer is hitting. There's no strategy. We can just go into prayer mm -hmm. with no rhyme or reason, right? In, in the sense of you have no strategy from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so intercession starts with you, your intimacy, your truth with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so if you've never done it, it's, you know, getting before him and literally being honest, pouring yeah. out your heart before yes. him, being honest, telling him your pain, your fears, your mm -hmm. anger. If you have unforgiveness, if mm -hmm. you are in pain, if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, if you're even angry with him, you can go to God and you can tell him these things. Mm -hmm. It is so easy for us to share with other people and say, I'm feeling this way, help me. Many of you are walking around looking for someone to lay hands on you, prophesy yes. you, and you want a word. You constantly want a word mm -hmm. from somebody else. But you know why sometimes the Lord doesn't let that happen? Because he's waiting on you to mm -hmm. voluntarily come yes. to 
him yes. and intimacy with him so mm-hmm. that he can start to change your life yes. so that he can align you with the right people that yes. he wants to align you with in your life so this is imperative for you mm-hmm. guys to understand that your first place as an intercessor is your truth and your intimacy mm-hmm. with god it's laying before him it's asking him to change you it's Mm -hmm. asking him to build you to restore you restore the different areas of your life Mm -hmm. and yes he is going to use people he is going to assign and align you with people that is going to help change your life the trajectory of your life that is why you see these three powerful women on this Facebook Live with me because they all have a part of changing my view when it comes mm-hmm. to spiritual things. And so I mm-hmm. I implore each and every one of you on this Facebook Live tonight, if you have never had a session with the Lord where you have bared yourself naked, mm-hmm. as a matter of fact, the next time you take a shower, right? Be naked before Mm -hmm. God. Be naked and unashamed. Tell him how you're feeling. Mm -hmm. Pour out your heart to him. Call on him. Call on the name of Jesus Christ. Because at the end of the day, he is going to, he's going to show up. And then he will align you and he will align you and he will launch you into things that he wants you to do. All right? And so before I go into these women's uh, what they're going to share tonight. I also wanted, uh, you know, I, I ple- please apologize. Let me apologize. I forgot to share that Deidre tonight is going to be talking to the singles. So if you're mm-hmm. on here and you're single, hold on to your seat. Hold <laughs> on. <laughs> got some good stuff for you tonight. All right. Mm-hmm. But I just wanted to really share about truth, being mm-hmm. honest with God. Tell him you lie, you steal, you cheat, you watch porn, you masturbate. Tell him where you are in your life. He sees it anyway. Uh You're being watched anyway. Everything that we do and say is being watched and recorded. Go to him in honest, in spirit and in truth. Go to him and be like a child. Put down your titles. Mm -hmm. Put down the the letters behind your name. Put down your status. Put down your money. Put down all your houses and your cars. Put Mm -hmm. down, put it all down. He don't care about that. He wants to know you. He wants you actually know. He wants you to know him. He wants you to know him as Jehovah Rapha, your yeah. healer, as Jehovah Jireh, your provider. Yeah. He wants he wants you to know him as Jehovah Overdue. He knows how to overdo things for us. He wants you to know him as Jehovah Nisi, your banner. He wants you to know him as Jehovah, Jehovah Shalom, your peace. He wants you to know him as El Roy. He sees you. He yes. sees you. He wants you to know him as El Shaddai. He is like the multi-breasted God. He's like a mom mm-hmm. for the motherless, the father to the fatherless. Yes. Get to know him. Get to know him, ladies and gentlemen. And yes. it will change your life. Mm-hmm. It will change how you see everything in your life intercession starts with you each and every one of you first so make sure you go before him i say it all the time with a broken and contrite heart and let him know truly where you are so that he can now step in and be the lord over your life yes and so tonight really quick i wanted to read this because I'm so full, but this is a Psalm that changed my life. And I want you guys to hear it. I'm gonna read it for you. It's powerful for those of you that are seeking God, for those of you are saying, God, do you hear me? For those of you that have yet gone to him with your heart wide open to receive him, I want you to read Psalm 139. It says, oh Lord, you have searched me and known me You know when I sit down and when I rise up, you discern my thoughts afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted 
with all my ways, even before a word is on my tongue. Behold, O oh Lord, you know it all together. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit? Oh, where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. Mm -hmm. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light about me and, and the light about me be night. Even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as the day, for darkness is as light with you. For you formed me. You formed my inward parts. You knitted me in my mother's womb. Yes. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Ladies and gentlemen, please read that scripture. For the next few weeks, study that. Study that, ask God to show up in your life and lay before him and be honest before him. That is my word for tonight. Intercession starts with you and your mm -hmm. intercession with the Lord. And yeah. with that being said, I just want to now go and I would love for Mrs. Taylor a woman of intercession. I would love yes. her. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Tracy. First of all, I just want to thank you so much for the opportunity to be on this live again. Thank you for having me. Thank you for, um, I feel like even just with us meeting, it was a divine connection. And I thank God for that. Thank you for your friendship. Thank you for your honesty. Thank you for being transparent. Um, just thank you. You know, thank you so much. I truly honor and bless you um, for this time. Thank you for um, believing in the, the God in me. Um, you know, and um, I just really want to honor you and bless you, you know, for that. Um, but to even, you know, um, connect to what you were just saying, that intercession starts with you is so important because, you know, the word of God, I was reading this week in Mark 14, and it's so interesting because with Jesus and the disciples, Jesus was sitting with the disciples and telling them, hey, you know, I believe it's in Mark 14, 30, 32 to 34. And he's telling them, hey, watch and pray. He keeps telling them to watch and pray, but they keep falling asleep. Mm -hmm. And it's so interesting that as he's telling them to watch and pray and they're falling asleep every minute, um, he's like, man, you know, like, can you just stay like, can you just <laughs> stay up and pray like he was getting annoyed with them? Yeah. But it's interesting because in that intimate time of prayer and intercession while he was talking with the father, I knew that he needed his disciples to help him pray to undergird him because what he was getting ready to step into what he was getting ready to do even though the disciples did not know that Jesus was getting ready to crucify himself to be able to save them and um, I truly believe that the Lord was telling them look pray so that they can be aware so that they can see when the betrayer is com coming um, because it was at that moment that Judas came with the soldiers to cause the soldiers to take Jesus and it's so interesting because it reminds me of the scripture that says, while men slept, the enemy sowed wheat among the tares. Okay. So if you're not careful, when it comes to intercession, if you're always sleeping, you're not awake, you have to ask the Lord to awaken you. Because when you are awakened, you are able to see the accuser and the brethren and shut down its demonic attack. Of course, we know that with Jesus, Jesus, this was a part of the will of God concerning him. So he went with it. But as you continue to read further along, you know, in Mark 14, it's so interesting because Jesus tells Peter, look, you are going to deny me three times. Of course, Peter is like, no way. I'm not going to do it. I love you so much. Right. But it's so interesting because as I was reading that and you read verse 67, it was talking about how Peter, you know, went into the town. And when he went into the town, the servant girl said, hey, I know you have, you were with him 
And of course, Peter said no. But the one of the things that the Lord was showing me was that people will identify you based on who you have been with or mm -hmm. who you have been associated with. Mm -hmm. Whether if you have been with him, people will be able to identify you have been with Jesus. Or mm -hmm. if you have served or been with another God or another person, people will be able to identify that. It's inevitable. It's like you cannot deny who you have been with because it, it will be on you. So if you're in the face of the father, people would recognize, oh my goodness, you have been with Jesus. Um, also too, as an intercessor, we also have to make sure that, you know, um, building, you know, our relationship with God is important. Like Tracy was talking about that level of intimacy, that level of bearing your soul and being open and transparent and honest is yeah. so important. There's no way that you can be a true intercessor until you have first laid down your life. And if you're not willing to lay down your life, your own desires, your own way of doing things to be able to capture the vision of Christ, then you will be able to tap into sorcery in your secret prayers. Yeah. Um, and it's so important because, um, like I was saying with Peter, just to go back to Peter, it's interesting because Peter allowed fear to control his response. He was fearful, even though Jesus already told him that he was going to betray him. I mean, not betray him, but that he was going to pretty much, I guess, betray him. But again, you see that Peter betrayed him because of fear. And then you see that Judas betrayed him because, of course, he had to do the will of God. And it was Satan in Judas to be able to um, go and betray uh, Jesus. But one of the things I love about Jesus, especially when you read Mark, is that when they had the Last Supper and Jesus was talking to the disciples, he said to them, one of you will betray me. Jesus yes. never exposed who the betrayer was, even right. though he knew who it was. The disciples were wondering, who is it? Who is it? And even though he did it, he did it so discreetly that they still were not able to pick up that it was Judas. So it's interesting how God's grace and mercy, he will cover you. Mm -hmm. um, when you are getting ready to do wrong, but that's his grace and mercy. But the thing about it is, is that because when the enemy uses people and the enemy uses people in a way that um, it's with pride or even just for fame or money or whatever the case is, they end up exposing themselves. Because again, the enemy is prideful. So he's going to do, do something that's lofty, that's grandiose, that is known. So Judas ended up exposing that he was the betrayer when, when the disciples didn't know. But it's also interesting too, because um, I think what hit me to the core is that Peter was just with Jesus in prayer. And then a few minutes later, he betrays him or he says he does not know Jesus because of fear, right? So one of the things that the Lord was saying to me was that people will build a relationship with you in private, but don't want to build it in public because of right. a backlash or heat right. that they'll get for connecting with you. Right. You know, so it's like, they're not ready to stand and defend you when there's opposition. Peter allowed fear to control his response, but also the Lord is like, pay attention to those that stay silent or deny your existence in public when you have been a major support to them in private. Right. And it's important to pay attention to that because now you know that, hey, not every relationship, everybody's going to be for me. And that's OK, you right. know, um, and but also recognizing those that are for you and focusing on that relationship so that you can build something that is, you know, holistic and beneficial. Right. Mm -hmm. um, also, too, everyone wanted to crucify Jesus. And it's interesting because they wanted to crucify him because he stood in his identity. They asked him, the soldiers, uh, the the um, the kings, everyone was asking him, you know, who are you? And he just said, yes, I'm, they asked him and said, hey, are you the son of God? Or, hey, are you the blessed one of the king? And he said, yes. And it's so interesting that the crooks of it was that they just wanted to kill him because he knew who he was in, in, in the father. Right. And as an intercessor, I would say, you know, people can't crucify you because Jesus have already done that for you. When you learn to crucify your flesh daily, people wouldn't be able to do it because right. your will is submitted to the one who has did the ultimate sacrifice for you to be free in your identity. So as an intercessor, it's important to be free. Romans 8 talks about we do not walk after the flesh, but after the spirit, right? And that when we put the deeds of the flesh to death, we are able to walk in full righteousness. So it's important to make sure that we walk in that. Um, also, too, as an intercessor, we're not afraid of releasing our words to God, but we're afraid of showing our um, emotions to him. And this is go, this goes back to what Tracy was talking about. 
um, just being transparent. And as intercessors, we use words. Sometimes we would even mimic and mock and, 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 and mirror other people's way of prayer and not necessarily gain a level of prayer with the Lord for ourselves. Just because it sounds good, it's grand, it's powerful. Yeah. So we, we think that that is the way of intercession. When in reality, it's like, no, let the Lord build his own prayer language in you. When you actually take the time to bear your soul, when you actually take the time to express how you really feel about a situation. Um, I think what it is sometimes, just even as people, we don't like to show areas of ourselves that we can't control. Um, it's like, you don't want to seem messy. You don't want to seem um, unkept. You don't want to seem, you know, um, out of line. You want to be dignified. You want to be proper and you want to have all these different things. But at the end of the day, it's in our vulnerability that we would have intimacy with him. Right. Mm -hmm. It makes me think of Luke seven with the woman with the alabaster box. She bared her soul before the Lord. And I believe I talked about this in part one where she went before him and she broke open the box and she washed his feet with her hair. And she repented before him publicly because her sin was public. Remember, all the men in the town was like, look, she has been around. Like, why do you have her in here? And why is she wasting all this oil? We could be making money off of that. We're wasting it. And it's so funny that, like I said before in the first live, that her sin was public, but her repentance was public before the Lord. And that right there, because of that intimacy, the Lord was the one to defend her. She didn't have to defend herself when they were coming against her. He spoke for her. He covered her, right? Another thing too, as intercessor is we got to make sure that we do not use our warfare as a defense mechanism to cover up how we really feel about what's going on. Right. Sometimes as intercessors, immediately when something happens, we automatically shift into war. We automatically feel like we need to fight. We automatically react to a situation. But we got to get to a place where we allow the Lord to um, give us a strategy and prayer on how to war um, and to war from a place of revelation and not from fear and control. And that is so important because we need to make sure that we are not anxious about anything, but that we can place our prayer with supplication and thanksgiving before the Lord and know that he would answer the situation. But the crooks of it is to make sure that we are being honest about where we are and say, Lord, I hate this. I, you know, I'm hurt or this disappointed me or my expectation about this was this. Maybe I viewed this wrong and really go into that with him and not feel yeah. like, oh, because a person doesn't agree with me that automatically they're the enemy. And right. it's like, no, we have to take the time to really sit with him and work on those heart areas, right? Intercessors know how to become introspective. We know how to deal with the inner workings of our heart. We know that, you know, um, um, that when that that we begin to question, you know, why are we praying for this situation? Um, you know, what are the challenges that take place with the situation and be able to make sure that we trade in what our vision in what our vision is for the vision of the Lord. Right. Um Another point too in intercession is do not internalize or inf familiarize yourself with prayer or with prayer requests um, because you have to know that it's not about you. Um, sometimes as intercessors, we can internalize things and feel like, hey, if this person is asking about this, are they talking about me? Is it about me or is it about this situation? And it's kind of like, no, don't do that because it's not even about you. And it's not even about the person that's requesting the prayer. It's all about what God wants for the person and the situation. So we got to fine tune our ears to focus to the instruction of the Lord, right? Being an intercessor means you are an advocate, an advocate means that you stand in the gap for others by defending their case. An advocate is someone that publicly supports you, that aids you, pleads your case before the judge and provides strength, counsel and advice. Um, and that is so important because we know Jesus is our advocate. So mm -hmm. as we stand as intercessors to play an advocate for someone else, we publicly support them. We aid them. We undergird them. We let it be known that, look, we're going to stand until we see the salvation of the Lord in this situation, right? Another thing that the Lord revealed to was that an intercessor, you're called to stand in the gap and not be the gap, meaning that you're assigned to stand and fight on the behalf of people for them to be able to experience the power of God. 
people are not connecting with you, you know, just because it's you, but they know that they'll be able to see results. But just because they're able to see results does not mean that you need to be the gap between them and God. Um, you know, this is where you teach people how to pray and teach them how to speak to the Lord for themselves. Sometimes as intercessors, we allow people to become too dependent upon us mm -hmm. because we like the, um, the attention that it gives us when it comes to praying for a situation and seeing how God moves. And when God moves, we automatically feel like, you know, we get the glory because I prayed for it. When a reality is like, no, God gets the glory. It's about the Lord. It's about what he's, we're just being used as a conduit to be able to pray and intercede for the will of the Lord to take place for that person's life, right? Jesus said in Luke, I mean, actually in Luke 4, Luke 11, 4, Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. And this is how we learn how to pray and also teach others how to pray for themselves, right? We want to make sure that we are not the ones standing in the way of that person connecting with God in prayer. Um, Romans 4 talks about not passing judgment on one another, but instead to make your mind, um, to make up your mind not to put a stumbling block or an obstacle in the way of your brother and sister. And you could be that stumbling block and that obstacle between them and God if you're always answering every prayer request. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, also, too, we got to be aware of our assignment. We got to know when the assignment has ended. Um, we can't get so caught up in taking on so many different assignments um, because we stay around that place for too long. And then when we stay there for too long, then you end up praying from an expired place. There is not fresh anymore. Those prayers are the ones are usually the ones that um, bring a stench up into God's nostrils because it's not fresh revelation. So, for instance, as an example, if someone asks you to pray for them for healing, you pray for their healing. But because they see the result, they're going to ask you to pray for this and that and place yes. all these level of <laughs> prayer of responsibilities on you when God has not given yeah. you that assignment. Yeah. Right. And you got to be careful because the word of God says in Matthew six and seven that when you pray, do not use vain repetitions. It's like the heathens, right? Um, you want to make sure that you're speaking from a place where it's just a direct link from the Lord. But praying from a place where it's expired, you end up using vain repetitions because you're just trying to fulfill what that person wants and not what God wants. Yes. Right? Um, don't carry unnecessary burdens in prayer. That's Jesus' job, right? Remember, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Like yeah. I said, this is where we have to teach people how to pray so that they can cast their burdens and their cares on the Lord. Of course, as intercessors, we take on the burden to be able to intercede on their behalf, but we do not take on so much to the point that we can't think for ourselves, to the point that we can't um, be functional with our family and focus on what God is telling us to do. We lose sight on the assignment that God is telling us to do because we're so burdened down with other people's responsibilities, right? Um, as an intercessor, you'll be tested to pray for those that you may not agree with. But when you pray for them, you have to allow the voice of the Holy Spirit to pray through you so you can pray the heart of God. Don't allow your grievances, disappointments, or disagreements to dictate how you should pray. Mm -hmm. And that is so important because the word of God says, love your neighbor, hate your... Um, no, sorry. It says, you've heard where it says, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, mm -hmm. that you are known as children of heaven. That is a sign that you are a child of God when you can pray for your enemies, um, especially those that you don't agree with. You want to pray the will of God. And that's why it's important to always pause when you know that someone has, you know, you have a grief in a situation, you have a disappointment. You don't touch the part of praying for them as yet until you have caught the revelation of Christ on how to pray. Um, because if you don't catch the revelation on how to pray for them, you're going to pray witchcraft prayers against the person. And we don't want to do that. Um, and intercession is not about how loud you sound. Right. The dog that has the loudest bark does not necessarily mean that they have a big bite. Right. All right. The bark is there to intimidate and make you think that it has a big bite, but really they're the most afraid and they have a small bite. It's usually the humble ones 
that are in the back that can devour the enemy silently without anyone knowing. Yes. <laughs> and that's the one that you, the one that is always silent, the one that is always in the back, that's the one that carries the real power because they don't want power for themselves. Yes. And the Lord can trust them with power because they are not seeking for attention and power. Yeah. Right. Um, intercessors don't use their prayers to bite and devour one another. They don't pray against each other. We know that we do not fight against flesh and blood. Right. But we know how to destroy the enemy in prayers. Right. The word of God says in Galatians, when you bite and devour one another, take heed that you will not be consumed by one another. And that's important because when people are praying against each other, you end up those prayers consume your life and you're thinking, oh, the enemy, it's warfare when really you inflicted that warfare with your mouth, right? Life and death is in the power of our tongue. Our mouth create, wor our mouth, uh, create worlds. Um, when you pray, when you speak, there is a presence. It's not just a person talking just to talk. But when that person is talking, it's their spirit man. It's the soul yes. that is coming up. So it's going to create a presence. If I come in contact with you and I experience something from you, I'm not experiencing the bodily form of the person. I'm experiencing the spirit that is flowing out of you as you speak. Mm -hmm. And as I experience that, I am able to reject that and say, no, this doesn't work for me. Or I'm able to say, yes, this is of God. I'm in agreement. Yes. You know, and there's an agreement to it. So you got to be careful and also have discernment and be alert on what you're listening to. Listen to how people talk and when they talk. Listen to what they are saying and, and listen to what they are not saying. The Lord will begin to fill in the blanks on the very things that they're trying to keep a secret or seal yes. from you. Um, so it's so imperative that we do that. Um, intercessors don't deal with surface situations. We are intentional. We deal with root issues. If we want to be able to see things turn around for good, or we want to be able to see results, we're going to get to the root of it. We're going to get to pulling up some things and making sure that we um, speak and declare what God wants to be planted in their life. Um, Again, like I said before, intercessors are not busy fighting and defending, you know, um, themselves, you know, especially in the courts of heaven, because the Lord will defend them, especially when the enemy is trying to accuse them in the courts of heaven. You could come boldly before the throne of grace to obtain mercy yeah. and find grace, you know, in the time of need. Um, also to beware of witchcraft disguised as intercession. OK, this is people who are offended, who gossip, who has frustration um, and they're asking you, hey, let's pray. But really, um, that prayer is from out of a place of offense or anger, um, mm -hmm. but they cover it up and say, oh, let's pray. But really, it's witchcraft. Um, mm -hmm. And again, remember, the Jezebel spirit is a wounded and insecure person. So they're going to say, hey, pray about this situation with yeah. me. And they play yeah. the victim. And when they do that and you partner with that, then you end up aligning yourself with um, this victimized, um, hyper religious, spiritual manipulation, finger pointing yeah. type of intercession, which is emotional manipulation. And it's also slanderous. So you got to be careful. Yes. Um, I'm just going to probably close out because I know everyone else has to go. But another thing too, prayer is a position you hold that solidifies your identity in the kingdom of God. You practice who you are becoming in the place of prayer. So in prayer, you are practicing. In prayer, you are um, becoming who God is creating you to be. Yeah. In prayer, you are in a place of allowing him to form and, and solidify your identity because you're learning how to be one with him. Prayer is such a supernatural and powerful powerful um, thing. Like I said before in the first live, every single religion, every single, um, uh, you know, anything, just any religion, anything, um, whether if it's witchcraft, whether if it's new age, whether if it's Catholic, whether if it's, you know, um, um, Jehovah Witness, they use prayer. Prayer is so powerful because your voice, your voice print can echo and shake things in the spirit. So even if they're going to chant or hum, they're going to use prayer to be able to activate and bring what they want. 
prayer is a spiritual force. So you have to be careful how you use it. Because when you veer off into the soulish or veer off into witchcraft, you end up gaining things or getting things, but it's not from God. It's demons fulfilling your assignment. Um, that's why it's important to purify your prayer life, purify your heart, deal with the intentions of the heart and um, be alert. Uh, my last point is I'm going to talk about my son, Josiah. We were getting ready to go to school. Quick testimony. And as we were getting ready to go to school, um, actually, we were looking for a school for him to go to. And as we were looking for that school, there was a few schools we went to. Um, it didn't really, you know, work out. So we told him, hey, pick and choose what you like. First, what my husband and I did, we prayed. We said, Lord, show us what school will be good for him because we know his ability. We know what he, you know, what he can do because we've been, he's been at home with us. We want to make sure we put him in a good and safe environment. And um, we... We went to a school and then we went to one school. He was able to have a free day for that whole day. Then he went to another school um, and then he was able to go for that free day. But the other school that he went to, he did not like it. As soon as we walked in, he said no. And I said, okay, tell me what's going on. So I'm like, hey, let's just go and, you know, go play with the friends, you know, go play with the toys, um, come meet the teacher. He said no. And I said, why? He said, this is not the school for me. He's only four years old. <laughs> and I said, really? He said, this is not the school for me. The school for me is the other school. And I said, okay. And then he said to me, um, so I said, okay, let's keep walking. You know, um, let's go look around and let's see, you know, how I'm just trying to see if he could get a feel of it. I want him to like the school, but he doesn't want to like the school. So I go to one of the um, emotion charts because I have one of those at home where we talk about how do you feel, what's going on, you know, whatever. So I said, okay, Papa, tell me how do you feel? Show me. So he pointed to the picture that said worried. And I said, why are you worried? He said, I'm worried you're going to leave me here. This is not the school for me. So I knew at that moment and I was like, wow, God, thank you for a clear and concise answer because we prayed and said lord show us what school my son should go to and sure enough when my son went to the school that he wanted to go to we met with the director she's a christian woman um she the way that they do school is just i asked her what was her um her common you know her her common uh mechanism or common method to be able to know um if they use like meditation or yoga or whatever she said no we don't use that our common method is to just redirect them to kind of read if they feel a little bit emotional or whatever. She's also a psychologist too, a, a child psychologist. So I was like, wow, God, you really set this up. So I say all of that to say, when it comes to your children, when it comes to your spouse, your family, inquire, ask God to reveal, ask him to yeah. show, ask him to um, just show you exactly what it is and he will answer. So I say all of that to say thank you so much again, ladies. I hope I didn't take too much of your time. No. <laughs> no. Um, oh my goodness. Nicole, awesome. first of all, that was just absolutely powerful. powerful. Oh, yes. um, you really laid that out. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much because everyone that's watching, I can see it in the comments that people are getting so much from Amen. this. But, you know, what I want them to know is intercession is like your heartbeat, you know, like mm -hmm. that's a, a true part of yeah. who you are and what you do is intercession. Mm -hmm. And so the way that you shared, people are truly getting a yeah. lot of fruit and Amen. food from it. And I just want to thank you. And so now we're going to go to our next powerful woman of God. I just wanted to add also that Sherilyn, I, I, I failed to add this in the beginning um, that Sherilyn is a powerful woman of God. One of the things that I love about Sherilyn, she takes ministry very seriously. She works alongside her husband. Um, they also, uh, you know, they they go live on on uh, Facebook, wow. uh, 8 p.m. on Sunday nights. You can check them out Sunday nights on Facebook Live as well as on their YouTube channel. Um, and so they also offer marriage, premarital and family counseling. Uh, Sherilyn says that one of her greatest pleasures come from the deep spiritual healing experienced by their clients who they take through deliverance. So they do deliverance as well. And so it's very powerful, uh, the work that they are doing when it comes to 
uh, marriage, just like us, uh, you know, we all have very similar uh, things in common. Like I know, you know, we're at the heart of marriage. Marriage is in our heart. The same thing for Nicole, the same thing for Sherilyn. And with Mrs. Ewing, she also does the singles. You know, singles is something she's very passionate about. And she, that's an area that she is called to. So I just wanted to give you some context about Mrs. Ross before she comes on. And so, uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we're going to hear from Mrs. Ross. Thank you so much, Tracy. Yeah. My, my gosh, I'm going to say the same thing that Nicole said. It's an honor honor, and a pri privilege to actually be on sharing the platform with you and these lovely ladies. But, you know, you giving us a job, giving me a chance to be here and to express what we are so passionate about and the mandate that God gave on all of our lives is ba basically to help him spread the, the good news of the, of the kingdom. Okay. And so thank you so much for that. And uh, Nicole, what a powerful foundation yes. and yes. insight and understanding of intercession. Yes. You, after that, we basically could just take questions yes. from people. You know, <laughs> from that because basically, in a nutshell, if you if you if you didn't get to hear the whole talk again, guys, listen to this over again. Right. Go in and get the, the nuggets that she 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 had to go in time wasn't on our side, but giving us so much nuggets. And I want to yeah. bring that understanding now into the, the marriage, into the family, because oftentimes we listen to, um, we, we, we listen about uh, intercession and we think it's something to be done in the church or it's something to be done out there in the world. But the, the foundation of the world is the, is the marriage, is the family, because everything stems from the family. And so, um, um, Deidre is going to talk about single the singles and how crucial it is for them to understand their power, their identity, their acceptance, their purpose, yes. in or, and the difference they will make when they do come into a marriage. Mm -hmm. But today I wanted to talk about in, in the power of intercession as um, um, from the standpoint and the responsibility of a wife, a, a woman, in you know, a mother, a yes. wife and a mother, because Oftentimes we are given so many hats to wear. We wear so many hats mm -hmm. and we can get we can get overwhelmed, we can get stressed and frustrated. And um, sometimes we feel undervalued based on all the things we have to do, but then it doesn't seem like we're we're appreciated. But I want to tell you, ladies, mothers and wives, your 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 role and your 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 responsibility and your 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 influence is necessary for the world to get to, 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 to function and for God's purpose to come about. And so a lot of the times um, we feel as mothers and as wives that our, our role is insignificant. And my goal is I hope Holy Spirit, I ask Holy Spirit to help me to really bring this understanding and clarity to us to see how important our role is. Sometimes we feel because we're not um, positioned as the head of the home or we're mm -hmm. not um, leading in out there in the world that being a, a, just a mom is not that important. But Jesus Christ demonstrated this wonderfully in two scriptures. You can write it on Mark 135 and Luke 5, 6. See, he, here it is, the, 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 the creator of the, the universe. He came and got confined in a body of a man, right? Now, how did he, how, how, um, and then he did, you know, he did a lot of miracles and wonderful things, but what was the most significant, the most important thing that he did oftentimes that allowed him to be so effective out in the world? Oftentimes his, um, his disciples were unable to cast demons out of people or um, help the blind to see and raise the dead and all these things. But Jesus would just come on the scene and in a, in a few it seems like a few minutes. It could, we don't know how long, but it's actually faster than they did. And he got results. Why was he able to get results consistently? Now, Mark 135 says, and in the morning, rising up, uh, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into the solitary place and there prayed. Luke 5, 16 says, and he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. 
Now, when don't you think it was amazing that when the disciples realized that they were failing in the in the mandate that he was giving them, they didn't ask him, how did you cast that uh, that sickness out of that, um, that demon, demon of that person? How did you raise the dead? How did you heal the, the sick? No, they asked him, teacher, teach us how to pray. Because they knew that every time he went away for a, week, a period of time, he came back and like this, he made so much great things happen. And they knew that was something that was missing out of their lives. And, when, and, and it's so interesting when Jesus started speaking when, uh, and started telling them how to pray. He says, when you pray, which means he expected us to pray. It's, it's necessary. It's a part of our lives. It's not if you pray. And oftentimes we go to prayer as a uh, emergency or desperate situation when it's in it's it's um, clearly um, uh, set up for us to always do this. And so women, you might be at home and um, and taking care of the children, but you're called to intercede on behalf of your family. And you have the, the anointing and the ability to do that. You see, proper prior preparation prevents poor performance as Jesus de demonstrated. And to be a successful mother or wife, the, the what we do, the proper prior preparation, the, the solitude time, the, the time that we're alone with God matters, as Nicole talked about, the mindset, the, the, the posture that we were supposed to be in. Now, after we've gotten all of that, how do we use this in our family? And why, and what is our purpose in doing so? Well, one, we have to, we were called to be like God. Remember in Genesis, God said, let us make man, which is plural, plural, both men and male and female in our own image. So we have the same um, ability, author, authority that God has, which means that whenever you speak a thing and you speak anything, it comes into uh, existence. So we have the same um, power and ability like our husbands to declare a thing to be able to um, pray and prophesy and do these um, these things, and we're it's able we're able to to make it come to pass. So we are because we are more domestically centered. That's how God created us, our nature. Um, we are responsible for creating Eden in our home. We are responsible for the presence, making sure that the presence of God is is maintained in our home. And so we do that through prayer and intercessing interceding because our power comes from god and in order for us to tap in that power to that power we have to make sure that we're fostering that relationship from the one who um make sure that it, uh, what founded it and so god himself he said you know uh, he created uh the, the the garden in the first he made the garden he put the the birds in the air the fish in the sea the, the vegetations he did all of that before he created man which means he made preparation, he created an environment, and then he brought man to function inside of it. So God is a God of order. And also he's a God that creates presence and atmosphere. Now women, we are responsible for the atmosphere and the presence in our home. And so when raising children, there's, there's two responsibilities we have as, as parents. One, we are to love them. We are to demonstrate love. We are to foster love. We are to teach love. We are to help children and get in, into love. And also, we actually teach our husbands how to love as well, um, based on on our on on who we are and how we carry ourselves. But one in parenting is love, and the number two is meeting their deepest need. Now, why do we have to meet our deepest their um their meet our children's deepest need and foster love or teach them how to love? Because our Father in heaven did that for us he loved us so much that he sent us his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life and while we were still sinners christ died for us so he demonstrated his love by the sacrifice given his life for us and so as wives we are on mothers we're supposed to demonstrate that love to our children and number two well how did god created the atmosphere of course eden in eden you'll find that um, we have all our deepest need meet. There was security in the garden, right? There was acceptance. We were made in the image of God. You know, we knew we were accepted. He walked and talked with Adam and Eve in, in the cool of, of the evening. And then identity. Our identity is that we were made in the image of God. And so we had purpose as well. He said to have dominion you know, and subdue and all those good stuff. So you're getting the point. God first 
met our deepest needs. And as singles, as we are fostering that relationship with God through intercession and through prayer and, and, and growing spiritually, we are now able to, to allow God to meet our four deepest needs. Now, when our four deepest needs are met, now we have to transfer that by training up our children. And training our, our children is by our behavior. How we, whatever we do, our children will do what we do and not what we say. So now we're transferring that. So how, how are we going to be able to do that? Well, I want to look at three powers. Um, there's the power of submission, the power of unity, and the power of the spoken word that is necessary to, break, to, to build anything. Anything that you, if you're building an organization, you're building a church, everything, these pro three powers are necessary in order for you to be successful. Well, where does that come from? Again, from the foundation that is the home. The home is the nucleus of everything. From it branches everything. And so basically the power of submission, when the husband is submitted to God, the woman is submitted, as God said, to our husband, the children are submitted to their parents, things work out perfectly, right? And then you have power of unity. Everything that we do is in unison. When we're uni unified with the word and will, which is the will of God, then we find out that everything manifests beautifully inside our homes. We have no issues in doing the things that we're called to do. And then the power of the spoken word, of course, we know that death and life is in the spoken tongue. So as wife, we were given the mandate by God to be the helpmate of our husbands and foster this atmosphere in our home. You know, we were made we are made in the image, so we're supposed to make sure we demonstrate that image. Now, how do we create this atmosphere? There's two ways we create the atmosphere in our home. Number one, through prophesying, right? Mm -hmm. And number two, by prayer. And so let me talk a little bit about um, prophesying and prayer. Prayer and prophecy are the ways and how we 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 kind of shape and form our 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 home, our family. Now, um, Nicole was talking about that in history, the, the the entire world was shaped and fast and formed and and changed and transformed by prayer and fasting. Now, God would decree a thing, right, and and we know it will come to pass. But then we had intercessors, or or you um like in the in in Isaiah, in um, Ezekiel, in these prophets that say, Oh God, you know, have mercy upon us. You know, um, surely you won't let destroy your people, and people look at you and say you're a god of that you're not basically. And so God would um. We would say, okay, we're gonna, I'm gonna destroy the people, but then he would show mercy and he would stop it after a while. The same thing in the beginning, um, when the children of Israel would 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 um, re reject God and 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 follow after false god and so on, and and they would be calm, taken into captivity, like what happened with Gideon, and then God would send a deliverer, and the judges were also, you know, people that came and and interceded on behalf of the um, the, the children of Israel, and God showed mercy upon them. And so we have the same responsibility in our homes as wives, believe it or not, that we are going to shape and fashion our, our home and our families. And so prophesying, prophecy, definition of prophecy is basically uh, prophecy to inspire the inspired declaration of divine will and purpose. Inspired declaration of divine will and purpose. What are we inspired? We have to want, um, think about it. That word inspired. What are we inspired by? Are we inspired by God, the will of God, which is the word of God? Or are we inspired by the things of the world? You know, because the world, and which is controlled by the devil, is constantly telling us stuff contrary to the will of God, which is then directly um, um, contradicting the will of God for our life, which is the best for us. And so we want to make sure that um, we're not inspired, which means in spirit, which spirit is in you. We're not inspired by the enemy and his tactics and the ways of the world. We want to make sure that we're inspired by the word of God. Hence, we are always, you'll always hear us over and over talk about the importance of um, knowing the word of God, um, in, you know, meditating on the word of God. And so... We want the other thing about that is um, the divine will. So whatever we are, we're prophesying should be the divine will of God for our life, which we all know is the word of God. And we want to make sure we're doing that same thing for our husbands and our, um, I'm sorry, and our children. So when we are prophesying, we're, decla de we're decline declaring, sorry, the divine will and purpose of God for our children and our husband's life. 
So in Ezekiel um, 37, 4 and 6, it talks about um, uh, um, is that God was telling Ezekiel to prophesy over these bones so that they will live, dry, try, prophesy over dry bones to make them live. In our lives, there may be things that's going on in our, in our relationship and in our children's life um, that we're not happy about. So what do we do? We want to make sure that we're prophesying the will of God, which is the word of God over our children. So, you know, our children are behaving a little backward or whatever the case may be. They're not doing what they're supposed to do um, based on how you train them. You don't go out just like Jesus. Jesus didn't go out first. Jesus went and intercede. He went and, and spent time in prayer. As wives, we go into our prayer room, our prayer stands, and we pray and intercede. You make a list of the things that you, is troubling you concerning your husband or your children if they're having challenges. You know, you're just collecting data all the time about your family as a wife and as a mother. As you collect that information, if it's uh, if you, and then you put it up against the will of God, is this God's desire for us? or not because but god said beloved i pray that you prosper and be in good health as your soul prosper so if it's not in alignment with those things then guess what it's in it's it's counterfeit so what we're going to do we're going to get the word of god and we're going to pray prophesy the word of god over our family over um our husband and over our children individual children based on what they're going through you're prophesying the word of god because you're not going to come in agreement with the things of the world concerning your children so this takes time, uh, time, ladies. Yes. This takes time, you know. So we can't be on social media twenty four seven. We cannot be um, in the business of the church and our our sister there and so on. When we have families, mm -hmm. we have work to do, and we were given our children in a space of time, you know, to be able to influence them to get to that point where they're on automatic. The other thing now, when when we when we love our children and we, we were meeting their deepest needs, the next thing is to so that they can launch, so they won't have failure to launch. But if we're spending the most important times for our children, um, uh, of our children's growth, being distracted, which is the enemy, a big tactic of the, 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 the enemy, to, get, to have us distracted about what's going on in the world. Me, I don't watch news. I don't take, I don't watch the news at all. Why? Because it's none of my business. Yeah. And you, <laughs> me, right? But guess what? If it's happening out there, guess what? If it affects our children, when they come in, they'll talk about it. So when it when our children are affected by it, or you're seeing ch people's children, you have friends and so on, they will talk about it. And if it's affecting them, then guess what? You can intercede about those things, you know. But you don't don't make it your business to be out there grasping all the things about the the celebrities and all these people. It's none of our business because it's delaying, putting us a place in distraction. Mm -hmm. When we were given a responsibility as a wife to intercede in our own family, there's going to become a time. For example, with me, I spend a lot of that time interceding on behalf of my, my husband and children. I mind my own business uh, mm -hmm. because I was I realized that I didn't know what I was doing. But I so I needed the help of God. So when I spent a lot of times on my face, God helped me to be a wife. God mm -hmm. helped me to be a good wife and a good um, good um, mother to these children because I don't want to fail at this. And so he worked on me first, like, like Nicole talked about. And then when, as he's working on me, he started showing me in the areas where I'm to prophesy and pray and intercede on behalf of our children. Now in my latter days, I am now 44 years old and my husband and I, God has launched us into ministry. So we're still able to go into purpose. It's not like we're going to lose out on anything, but mm -hmm. God has, it's an order. If we choose to have a family before we're in our purpose, then we cannot blame anyone else or God for it. But God has a plan. He has a plan. It's not a mistake. He has a plan. So, but we want to make sure we are, we're doing the order, make sure our families is in, in, um, intact make sure that we're doing our responsibility as a wife, as a husband, and a husband. And there's going to be a time when God's going to call us to whatever it is that he's been placed in our, in our hands at his perfect time. Okay? I kind of sidetracked there. The next thing we're talking about now is prayer. So I mentioned prophesying over our family. You know, you're speaking the will of God over them. And then um, then prayer. And prayer is, is calling on a divine help of a sovereign creator to intervene in earthly affairs and bring about, bring about his intended will for them. And so when we're praying, we're praying only what God's intention is. 
we did not make ourselves. We got, I, I like to make it very simple. You see, we did not create us. In regardless of what science, te- science is telling us, we are not amoebas that form in nature or something we evolve every so often. I am too, I am too beautiful to be an amoeba. I mean, come on now. You, you think an amoeba could create, you know, Sherilyn could create you the way you think and so on. So basically, if you want to get offended, get offended at the scientists because they're telling you you were coming from um, amoeba. Anyway, that was a sidetrack. So we're praying to the divine creator that he created, created you perfectly and, and, and he has special purpose for you. You are so important to God. You see, God called us beloved. And I was looking at the definition of beloved. And one of it is idolized. And I'm like, what? God idolizes us? Do you know what it means when you're idolizing something? You breathe, think. Everything you do is is consumed. You're consumed with this person. God is consumed with his love for you and his purpose for you. You know, he's obsessed with you. So you think he's going to give you information or give you things that's contrary to your happiness and the best for you? So that's why we go back to him, because he created us for success. Okay? And so, um, like I mentioned, um, Third John 1 and 2, the sauce beloved, I pray that above all, above all things in the world, he created so many wonderful things. Above it all, he prays, this is God, Jesus' prayer for us, that we prosper and be in good health as our soul prosper. So basically, that's it in a nutshell. We are supposed to know as women that we are valuable to God. And, uh, and we, we were called to be, um, our assignment is more domestically centered because we, we, are, we were given the mandate to foster Eden in our home. And we do that by our words and prayer and prophecy is one of the things that we, we do to get that um, atmosphere in there. So that's it, guys. Wow. Sherilyn, that is amazing. Thank you so yes, much. Yes. And I am in full agreement that this whole beauty was not made from an amoeba. (laughs) (laughs) I am fearfully and wonderfully Wonderfully. made by the Lord himself. Hallelujah. Amen. (laughs) Amen. As it says in Psalm 139, he knitted us in our mother's womb. But now we want to shift over to the incredible the amazing Mrs. Ewing. Uh, she singles, put on your seatbelt. Uh, she has a word for the singles in the group. And so take it away, Mrs. Ewing. Yes, good night again. And Tracy, I just want to thank you for inviting me for a second time on this dynamic platform. We are the dynamic four. <laughs> That's our new name, the dynamic four. Yes. <laughs> Sherilyn, you and Nicole did a wonderful, wonderful, yes. wonderful, powerful job. I do agree with you, Sherilyn, that please, please, please go back and listen to this teaching yes. again because you would not just get it this one time on this live. You will miss something, and I could assure you, you go back back it will be meaningful to you okay singles are you ready i hope so we have been listening to you and um from tracy talked about this second video we're doing tonight it just been placed on my heart that i need to reach out to the singles so i was pondering and pondering and finally i said you know what let me see how tracy feels about this and she was on board about it and so here i am so singles i want you to have your bibles i want you to have your pens and take some notes because you will be this is bible study for you tonight okay i want to talk about the first video we did i just want to briefly go over the point i spoke about renewing rebuilding and restoring and i stated that we are in a time now where god is ready he's here he's waiting he always wanted to renew restore rebuild your life to the original plan that he had for you 
But I also stated that you have to make sure that you're not doing anything in your life that will hinder God's plan for you. And you must be living according to God's commandments. I gave two scriptures. Actually, I gave many scriptures, but there were two key scriptures that I gave, which was Psalms 51 and 10, Psalms 51, 10 to 12, and Isaiah 9 to 10. And turn with me there because I really want to read it. And I want um, singles, please follow. Everybody follow because it's, it's important to read and understand what you read and just quote scriptures and when you quote it you don't even remember what you quote so for me i like to look at the words i like to meditate on it i like to go back i like to look for the content in which it's talking about and it helps me better understand what the whole scripture was about so psalm 51 10 to 12 says create in me a clean heart O god and renew a right spirit within me cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy holy spirit from me Restore unto me joy of the salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then Isaiah 9 and 10 said, The bricks are fallen, but we will build with hewn stones. The sycamores are cut down, but we will change them into cedars. In other words, God is basically saying that even though you may feel like all hope is gone, he is God. He is omnipresent. He will renew, rebuild, and restore you just where you are. And you have to believe that. So that sums that up in a nutshell, the first video. Now I would get to my point for tonight. The question is, how do you prepare and intercede for your God-ordained spouse? And to be honest, the answer to that question is very, very, very simple. But for most singles, you're thinking, oh my gosh, what is she going to say? It is simple. My husband teach about it all the time. All we must do is follow biblical principles, which are the laws of God, which are his commandments. I will say it again. We have to follow biblical principles, which are the laws of God, which are his commandments. Now, listen as I read this scripture, because this scripture will let you see and go back directly. It's talking about this, the word of God. It's Jeremiah 17. 5 through 18. I'll give you one minute to get there. Jeremiah 17, 5 through 18. And it reads, Thus said the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusts in man and make flesh his arm, and whose heart depart from the Lord. For he shall be like the heath in the desert and shall not see when good cometh but shall inherit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land and not inhabited. Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord, whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be a tree planted by the waters and spread out of her roots by the river and shall not see when he cometh, but her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in, in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Now, that right there tells us what happens when we trust in man and what happens when we trust in God. Based on those scriptures, I'm going to trust in God. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Psalms... 37 and 5 says, Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Not he might bring it to pass. He shall bring it to pass. And I'm giving you these scriptures, singles, because I need you to hear this. I need you to understand this for what I'm about to share. 
Psalms 119 and 18 says, we can see wondrous things if we follow God's law. I cannot begin to stress enough how important it is to follow God's law. As singles and you are in beginning to intercede for your God or Dean spouse, first of all, you must be honest with yourself. Either you are serving God or you are serving the devil. I had to make that conscious decision to serve God and refrain, refrain from doing it any other way. And let me tell you, that's not easy because reality is you're going to slide left, come back right, slide left, come back right. But how long are you willing to do that? When are you going to get fed up and say, hey, enough is enough. You're constantly praying to God. You're asking God for this spouse but you are not at all prepared. I was there, you will hear my testimonies coming down. I didn't realize these things till very late in life. So for young persons out there, you there is hope. You have somebody now guiding you, helping you along the way so that you don't have to go through some of the things that they went through. Now, when I talk about refraining from doing things God's way, most of all, people think it's just, okay, having sex or having intercourse. It's more than that. It is much more than that. You do things that you know is of the will of God by lying. Some people call it white lie. What is a white lie? I used to say that it was only a white lie. What is a white lie? A lie is a lie. <laughs> and I mean, we, we do that so often and think nothing of it. It's a serious, serious thing. I was so frustrated. I mean, nothing to me was clear. I just was bitter and angry to, to, to really be honest. And so therefore I was not lining up with God's law. I was not lining up with the word of God, but I was praying to the same God whom I expected to help me. But reality was I was not living up to what his expectations of me were. So I had to line myself up. I had to commit myself and stay committed to being faithful to God's word. I had to trust his process and follow his law. And I will not be here to tell you that was an easy thing to do. But I am here to tell you that it is possible because I am a living testimony. Let's look at Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. And this, this is such a powerful scripture. It says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding in all that all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path now we know that scripture inside out but do we really understand the words of that scripture because if we did honestly a lot of things that we worry about even us as christians we still do it. We still neglect that scripture. We have to constantly remind ourselves of God's words daily. That's the only way healing is going to come. I will share this um, short testimony. It was during a time of my single life. I allowed the spirit of anxiousness, frustration, loneliness, sometimes bitterness just to creep into my life. I was at a place where I knew God had much better for me. I also knew, like I said before, I wasn't obeying his laws. I had to get in a place of repentance. I repented to God. I surrendered, like you say, Tracy. I had to surrender all all to God, all. 
I was believing in him and trusting in him that what's left, okay, I have tried everything else. What left? This must work because everything I tried to do on my own didn't work. So this must work. I had to learn how to love myself and how to have an intimate relationship with God. I had to break a lot of old habits and oh, let me tell you, getting rid of those habits and traditional behavior. Oh, man, I thought I would have never broken free from them. But thank God I'm delivered. <laughs> I am delivered. <laughs> the first step to developing an intimate and fulfilling love relationship with God for me and wanting all that he had for me and wanting all of his promises, I started looking at my life internally. I had to really do some self-evaluation of Deidre and stop blaming those around me and stop saying, God, you're taking too long. I'm tired. Jeez, I'm single. You know my needs. So why am I going through this? Everybody telling you, oh, you so good, you this, you that. I say something got to be wrong with me. I'm hearing what people are saying, but it isn't lining up with what my life is. So I literally did an internal check with myself. And I began to put Christ to the forefront. Loving any person romantically would have never worked for me if I didn't know how to love myself. And I didn't know how to love myself. I thought I did. But like, you know, when you have a fake smile, you are there and everything just fake, 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 mm -hmm. fake. Mm -hmm. You watching everybody who appears to be or seems to be happy. And in you, you don't want to have no envy because you don't even know if it's real, but you're just looking at the outer apparent and you're like, my God, Lord, I want to be with somebody. What is it? Why am I always meeting these, what I call deadbeat guys? <laughs> when is my friends coming? I'm just being real singles. I just want to be real. So when you leave tonight, you know that you are not or we're not alone. I want to give this scripture, Exodus 34 and 14. It says, for thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord whose name is jealous is a jealous God. Now, let me tell you when that hit me. I realized that, hey, I'm worshiping wanting a spouse because never once I asked God, who you have for me or who do you want me to be with? I'm just telling him, send me somebody. Somebody, of course, I'm asking him for a good man. But that's all I used to say. I never went in detail and explained to him exactly what I wanted. And so in developing that personal relationship with him, it's like you really can't describe that to nobody because it's like you feel him here. And now you're understanding that he's guiding you. He's leading you. He's encouraging you. He's teaching you. And it makes you realize that you can go on and you can do this. Yes. And no one, no one can replace that love between you and God. I had to realize that. No one could have determined my happiness. Nobody, only God could have sustained that and I am grateful that I went through those process so that I had to learn how to have that intimacy with him when I decide to do all of this honestly and I try I'm trying not to get emotional on this so when you see me pause I'm holding back a minute but this is real for me. When I decided to do all of this, 
that's the only time I began to see tangible changes in my life. I began to see all those negative spirits that had me in bondage, that was grounding me deep, deep, deep into a pit, a pit that I felt that I would have never gotten out of. God exceeded my expectations of him and to date, I can still say I'm amazed at what God is doing in my life. Me, who I thought God was just not hearing me. But I, ha I, I now understand it has to be in his time. And if God could have done that for me, I'm not, I'm not special. He created all of us. I'm not more special than anyone else. That means he can do it for you. But you cannot expect him to do these great things for you and you still want to live in the world and do your own thing. It's not fair to God. It's not going to happen. You have to stay committed and make your decisions. Let's look at Joel 2, 12 and 13. And I'm giving scriptures and I'm reading them, singles, because I really need you to hear me. I need you to understand that this process is a process. It's not going to be an overnight thing. But if you apply the law, believe in it, put God first, victory will be yours at the end. Joel 2, 12 and 13. Therefore also said the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning and rend your heart and not your garments and turn unto the lord your god for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger and of great kindness and repentance him of the evil don't worry about what you did in the past we all have a past don't think what you did in the past is so great that God will never forgive you. Jesus. I was there. I was there. I was thinking everything possible why I was in the position I was in. But I said, no, this is a gracious and merciful God. He will not hold these things against me. I am holding these things against me. Yes. And, and that's very important to know because you would never move forward. I couldn't move forward. It was like someone was just pulling me. You know, Kevin always illustrate that um, in his teachings. I, I couldn't move forward until I learned these things. Another scripture in Joel is Joel 2, 25 and 26. It clearly explains the rewards after repentance oh my god imagine that there's a great reward for you after your repentance yes. and it says and i will restore to you the years that the locust had eaten the canker worm and the caterpillar you know the scripture well but read it and the palmer worm my great army which i sent among you and you shall eat plenty yes. i am eating plenty yes jesus and be satisfied and praise the name of the lord your god that had dealt wondrously with you and may and my people shall never be ashamed you heard what god say i was ashamed of something God said, once I repent, I have nothing to be ashamed of. So why are you still ashamed? Read your Bible. Develop a relationship with God. The results of restoration would be both in the physical and in the spiritual this is with your repentance with the physical it says you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied that means the crops would bear in abundance spiritually they would praise the name of the lord your god and has dealt wondrously with you 
God would be glorified for his wondrous work. You would be glorifying God for his wondrous work. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that something that, I mean, it's right there, but we didn't see it like that. For me, I was like, oh my goodness, all these years I've put my, set myself back. Where was this Bible? The Bible's right there collecting dust. And the only time I went to God was when I wanted him to do something for me. Then when I go to bed, oh Lord, if I should die, make I repent for all my sins, blah, blah. We know what we do, but we don't. I didn't have a relationship with God. I have to be real. I did not have a relationship with God. And this scripture here just pulls it together. Mark eleven twenty four, when it says, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. As Christians, we read the scripture over and over, but do you really believe those words? No. Because I used to read it and say, well, how come I'm not having anything? But I had to keep reminding myself over and over what the word of God said. But it was only after I repent, decide to put Christ at the center and follow his words. Singles, I'm here to tell you, do not settle. Break all of those habits and traditions. It will be a challenge. Yes, everything is a process. Do you prefer to stay in bondage the rest of your life? Mm. And all the great things God has for you, 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 you prefer never to see them fulfilled? Or you prefer to get real? Especially if you have children, what foundation are you laying for them? What are their futures going to look like? They should be your governing thought to do better and to draw closer to God. I know it was for me. Yes, Lord. Refuse to settle singles. Refuse to settle. Second testimony I'd like to share. And many persons may not know this, but I had the opportunity before I met my husband, Kevin, before Kevin and I started dating, I had the opportunity, I actually was proposed to twice. And one of them I truly, truly was in love with. And the other one was more of a convenience, you know, like we say, I speak in truth, I'm singles out there. So really, really listen. The first guy was dating I really, really had a connection with him. But he betrayed my trust. And after he betrayed my trust, I, I just couldn't find myself back in the place with being with him. But I loved him so much. So what happened was, you know when you say you're dating and you left the person, then you go back to the person, you left the person, you go back to the person, and... It wasn't for me. I couldn't deal with it. Mentally, I couldn't deal with it. Physically, it was taking a toll on my body. I remember one of my aunts said to me, my Lord, you, you just have head and no body. She said, you, who, what happened? <laughs> she said, all I can see is head and I see nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I can laugh now, but I was crying then. And that was the opening eye for me. And I took a good look at myself in the mirror and I'm like, Lord, you're going to let this man kill you, girl. I kid you not. It took me three years to release and forgive that guy. That's sad. All that time, I was keeping myself in bondage, but didn't realize it. And I made up my mind one day that I was going to release him and forgive him. And I did that. 
And the second guy that had proposed to me, like I said, he was more of just a provider. I was not in love with him. I mean, we were all about looking for rings. I kept saying I couldn't find it. Or I said, I don't like this one. I don't like that one. Because the truth of the matter is, I knew I wasn't in love with him. But I knew if I did marry him, providing everything would be okay. But I wanted more than that. I always wanted more than that. I always wanted the real thing. And I, my prayer to God was, God, I want the real thing. I don't want to be faking when I go in public. But at this time, I'm looking at my age now in life, and I'm like, Lord, my prayer always to God was the singles. I said, if he is the one that you want me to be with, you will make this work. Lo and behold, the same thing happened with this one. He betrayed my trust. The only thing this time I was happy, though, I, I wasn't sad on that because <laughs> I really was not in love with this person. But to be honest with you, if he hadn't betrayed my trust, I might have been married today to a man that God did not ordain for me. And when I think about that, it, it really saddens me. It sadden me, saddens me to the point that is, like, if it did happen, I'm like, imagine that you'd have been missing out on your ordained love that God had for you. So I have a saying that I say in that case, I say, Lord, I thank you for Jesus. I always say, God, I thank you for Jesus because I didn't make that error and marry that guy. And my last point, Tracy, is the signs, they are always signs. Oh my gosh, we always see signs. Signs are always there the signs don't go anywhere we pretend we don't see the signs we ignore the sign because we want to be with this person i mean we just i don't know why we do it but when we consider being in love with somebody we're not checking for no sign when a peace of mind seems to be as if it's eluding you on every side maybe it's all confirmation that this is not the choice god have for you yeah. but we're not looking at it that way because at the point sometimes we're just desperate so it's okay god could change them god's gonna change them really he wouldn't have to change them if he's the ordained one that he had for you you every you will accept who he is because that's who god has for you but i just wanted to be married can i keep it real i just wanted to be married but I am so grateful that God prevented me from making the biggest mistake of my life. Looking back at my past relationships, I do understand and I can truly say that God is preparing me for my husband today. He knew back then I wasn't ready for marriage. I, I wasn't ready for marriage. It was a want. It was just a want. But I wasn't prepared. I needed to go through a process. So he put me through this process. And for that, I give him all the honor and glory and praise for connecting me with my God ordained spouse. And I tell you, I never thought I would have saw this day. So when I tell you I'm beyond grateful to God, that's an understatement. I am beyond, I am totally grateful to God. I ask God, and think this is something you can do, I ask him to open my spiritual eyes. Open it up. I don't want to see nothing superficial. I want to see the real things. Mm -hmm. I told him the person who I'm currently dating, if that's not for me, Lord, if that's not your choice, then you release him. Mm -hmm. Just take him away. I will know that's you in it. And to be honest with you, even when I started dating Kevin, I said that. It doesn't matter if they're a pastor, a minister, a deacon, an usher. They're still human beings living in the flesh. And they yes. still may not be the one for yes. you. Yes, amen. So no Christian tell you because he's a Christian, marry that man. I know many Christian women who did that. 
and they end up in divorce or they end up being abused but they in the church and can't tell the pastor some pastors abusing their wives talking down to them belittling them they can't speak who I tell them my mouth had so it could God knows he could not have done that to me <laughs> He knows he could not have done that to me. God's timing is always perfect. You have yes. to believe that. Yes. When I decide to change my prayer life and develop an intimate relationship with God, I got married. But guess what? It didn't happen overnight. I think this is key to Tracy that singles need to know not because god sent you your ordained spouse means that everything is going to be perfect mm -hmm. but you would know here this is who god sends me so whatever is going on in the midst there's some history behind it there's some root behind it but this is who god sent for me kevin and i in our dating process we got married two years after we met because we had to sort through those deep, deep issues. But every time I would pray, when it get heated, I say, Father God, if he is not who you have for me, release him. And oh. release him, don't come out my mouth quick enough and I would hear, he is that way because of what he'd been through. Always. And I was so baffled about that. And, and, and people think, oh, you're going to hear this voice of the Lord the way I'm speaking. No, you just know it in here. And see, singles, I think these be thinking too hard. That's how I used to be. I used to be thinking so hard. Like, God, I can't hear you, but he's talking. He's showing you signs and wonders, and you still just say, God, I don't see you, and I can't hear you. But that's where you must develop the relationship with him. And I close with this, Tracy. I truly believe that the process I went through prepared me for this day where i would be on a platform encouraging others who are currently in the former position i was in my personal story is one of confronting myself surrendering it all when i say all to the almighty god and making a commitment to do it his way the results speak for itself. I am living an abundant life. But I had to learn how to live a life as a single woman. I had to learn not to give up. I had to remember that God is omnipresent. Singles, you are never alone. That even goes for married couples who may be experiencing some hard times. You are never alone. And I think if we ponder on that and we understand that, man, things will come our way and we'll be like, you know, when they say you suck it, eat, this yeah. too shall pass. You will be living a healthier, happier, better life. Cheryl, I agree with you. We are all beautiful. We have to learn to accept ourselves for who we are. You have to tell yourself you're beautiful because God created you. He don't make mistakes and he doesn't make errors. Yeah. I've never yeah. seen it. If somebody see it, let me know. Singles, don't settle. Change your prayer line. Obey the commandments, the principles, the laws, the rules of God and watch God supersede your expectations of him. Thank you. Woo! My goodness! You talking to, you know what? Oh, you. Let me tell you. Mrs. Ewing, I mean, seriously, 
it was good. You you knew what needed to be done. And I knew spirit to spirit that this absolutely was the perfect order. God is not a God of confusion. No. And so tonight was extremely strategic. And singles, I hope y'all <laughs> took some notes. And as Mrs. Ewing said, go back and watch this. Yes. Um, we all encourage you to go back and watch it. There's some powerful nuggets on here that is truly Holy Spirit led for you all to be able to glean from, take it, we touched on, marriage we touched on, children we touched on, singles. So this is confirmation to you all that this group is not just about marriage. We will be touching on a bunch of stuff that really relates to relationships, making relationships healthy and whole. That's what we're about on this platform. And so um, I'm hearing the feedback. I don't know if that is, um, well, I don't, I'm hearing some feedback. I don't know why. But anyway, but I just truly, Mrs. Ewing, from the bottom of my heart, you are amazing. Thank, Thank you, you for your powerful teaching tonight. Sherilyn, amazing woman of God. Yes. Thank you for your teaching tonight. Nicole Taylor, powerful, yes. powerful intercessor. I mean, guys, you got some real like downloads from the <laughs> Lord tonight, seriously. Like the hearts of these women, I've gotten to know them over the years and they are genuine. The way you see them right here is the way that they are in person. There is no, no, no faking, you know, no pretension. We don't, we don't do that. <laughs> you know, we, we are real, honest, true, authentic, uh, this is who we are. I am who I am. The way that you see me on Facebook Live is the way that you will yes, see yes. in person. And so tonight we are just honored and thankful. We thank you for the interaction. We love interaction. We want you guys to ask questions. That's what we are here for in the group, in Marriage Mechanics. Ask questions questions yeah. share because we're all about support and growth and progression the 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 progression of everyone on here is to have a healthy marriage yeah. a healthy joyful lasting marriage yeah. and contrary to what society says it is possible because I truly can attest that every woman that you are seeing on here, we are living the abundance. Yes. Yes. And, you know, my husband and I, we just celebrated 22 years of marriage. And Ooh. I can honestly say we've been through some stuff, y'all. Like Deidre said, we started out our marriage. This is why singles, this is why you got to take heed and listen and learn and yes. now because yeah. when my husband and i get ma got married we didn't have this kind of wisdom we didn't have this kind of teaching i'm not saying it was non-existent right but we didn't find it it didn't come our way so we sort of had to learn the hard way y'all and so in the middle of our marriage in 15 years it caused us to separate but guess what that's okay because mm -hmm. during that time that's when the lord said my daughter come it's time for me to teach you it's time mm -hmm. for me to to undergird you support yeah. you and show you how to be a wife mm -hmm. right and so what what i did that brokenness before the lord crying out to him pouring my heart out to him to him not to man but right. to him. Yes. That's where yes. my journey started That's i right. poured my heart out to my abba father and he came and and 
pulled me up and he looked at me and he said, you know what? I'm about to show you some things, some miracle signs and wonders mm -hmm. so you can understand that I'm actually speaking to you. Mm -hmm. And you know what? If you're not sure if God is speaking to you, ask him to confirm mm -hmm. it, to confirm mm -hmm. it through mm -hmm. people, to confirm it yes. through miracle signs and wonders. He is such a faithful God. He'll mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. And so all it takes is for you to be honest, start the process with honesty yeah. and truth with him. Yeah. And you will see, he will take you through such a process that will blow your mind yeah. and it will actually catapult you into the arms of your true intended spouse. It would catapult you into the abundant life. Amen. <laughs> That's all God wants for us. <laughs> yes, yes. Someone says he will do it. Yes, he yeah. will do it. And That's so, it is an honor. so it's announcement time. Yes. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, are y'all ready? Are y'all ready? Tell me yes. I want to say yes, yes, yes. yes. Drum roll. Are y'all ready to hear what I am about to share with y'all? Are y'all ready? I don't see any yeses yet. Yes, yes. I don't see any yeses. Okay, there they are. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are proud to announce that the four women you see here alongside our amazing husbands, our amazing kings, we are going to be live in Orlando, Florida. <laughs> Orlando, Florida. You can come and meet us live in person you will see the Ewings, you will see the Rosses, the Taylors, and the Humphreys in person. This is going to be a conference on intercession. Come, bring your family and your friends, and let's intercede for our family and our friends. There's going to be a powerful demonstration of God at that conference. Yeah. Come, put on your sneakers, put your hair in a scarf. Mm -hmm. We're not coming to be cute. <laughs> We're coming to really intercede. Yeah. And so we're going to be putting a flyer out. We're going to have a link. Give us about 24 hours. We're going to put it up in Marriage Mechanics. And we don't have a big room. It's a limited space. So once we put the link, you definitely want to register. And um, it's going to be a true move of God. This is something we prayed about. Yeah. This is something that's been confirmed and confirmed and confirmed. And so um, it is October the 28th and the 29th. It is October 28th and the 29th. So you can put that on your calendar. Uh, so if you're in the Florida area, it's very convenient for you. But if you want to fly in, we've been looking at airfares and everything. They're pretty inexpensive. And so it's, it's going to be a great time. Um, we have a few surprises for those who attend the conference. We're not going to release it online. I say come there and yes. see uh, what we're going to do for you. But I do believe that the Lord is going to meet you there. Yeah. He's going to be there, but the Lord will meet mm -hmm. you guys there. Yeah. All right. And so he'll meet you there powerfully, and you will see a true move of God in that mm -hmm. room. Mm -hmm. And so it is his doing, not ours. And so tonight we just give him all the honor, all, all the, the glory, glory, and all the praise oh, for yes. his goodness honor. and what he is doing in our me. lives and in mm -hmm. all of your lives. Mm -hmm. Because truly, as we are seeking the Lord, he is going to, like I said, I can't say it enough, he's going to blow your minds. Yeah. So look out for the flyer, share it, come out, um, and let's seek the Lord. We're going to pray y'all. We're going to pray and we're going to demonstrate intercession. Yeah. And so you only got a little snippet of the knowledge and wisdom 
of these women on here. But when you, well, I give you one little, I give y'all one little nugget. The You're going to hear from the men. <laughs> you're going to hear from the men behind oh. every woman that you see on Facebook Live. Yeah. You're going to hear from yeah. the men. You don't want to so miss get that. Ready, <laughs> get ready, y'all. Get ready, everyone. Get ready. Get ready. Mm -hmm. And so that's it, everyone. Thank you all so much for yeah. joining us tonight. Mm -hmm. It is truly our honor and our privilege to serve you all. Mm -hmm. And so this is this, I truly believe, is a, a mandate from God. It's yeah. an alignment um, from God. We are aligned for a time such as this. And so we can't wait to share with you, meet you, shake your hands. Um, you know, because of monkeypox, I don't know if we're going to be hugging. But, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but anyway, regardless of what, right? Um, we'll we'll do whatever is led by the Lord, but we are excited to see you all in person October yeah. 28th and 29th. So with yeah. that being said, everyone, we just want to say thank you again. God bless each and every one of you, and yeah. we will see you all soon, either on Facebook Live or in person in Orlando. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Good day. Good night, everyone. We love Bye. you. God bless you and your family. Good night. You all. <laughs> Amen. Bye.